data. Let's focus on this class and what other classes or past classes. All right, guys. For the next four hours, you're mine. Mm -hmm. Cell phones away. Computers used, please, only for class purposes. Oh. Um, I may have to step out. I'm Sentence. Oh. For family emergencies or medical emergencies, if you need to have their phone uh, active, yes, please. Last thing you want to do is you leave a funny event over here. You don't have an accident on a voicemail. <laughs> so, happen to me. Don't want to do that again. Alright? So, what we're going to do today is. Um, we dig deeper into site planning. We stopped last week with the question, does real estate development need the plan when you open up a discussion about what is a plan, who plans, for whom do we plan, and then, of course, what actually do we plan. For today's agenda, uh, I'm going to finish last week's slides. Lots of visual, lots of stories to tell. You will learn from the of our guest speaker and guest speakers. Um, that site planning and real estate development, when it goes into the physical construct, you need to have a vision and you're able to have uh, to envision and imagine certain things. Like, how does this room, how is that room going to look like if you paint it black versus yellow? Yeah? Kind of that imagination of putting your own ideas on an existing structure or even imagine to rise that structure and think about hmm, am I going to use concrete or class for that specific facade? This is a learning process. This is an experience you need to bring into the market over time. Yeah? It's like imagine an architectural student. Day one in the freshman uh, studio, they start drawing on pencils and paper. It's got one perspective views. Like literally, you sit there and draw the hallway in person in the 3D. Yeah, and stuff like this. And then you learn how to draw more details and build the complexity of your work. Yeah. So we're doing the same thing here. One thing is we play with those Lego and Duplo blocks. Sounds funny and childish, but you will have. Right? If you read actually the RFP and your job descriptions, those roles for the stakeholders, you learn, wow, this is actually more complex than just putting yellow and blue to blue blocks together. Because each block is a puzzle piece, a 3D puzzle piece in the problem you need to solve as a team. Yeah? So we're finishing uh, last week's slides with just more introduction, teasing you a little bit about thinking outside of the box looking at visions in the of urban planning in the past, regional planning. I'm actually running a small historical sightseeing tour through Europe. Like all the city I presented, I think, two, three, three or four, five, five thousand years old. And then a two thousand year old I actually happened to grow up in. Yeah? So the idea of the PowerPoint slides that come is that if you change the site, remember the plan disturbs the site, as Lynch says, if you change the site, you manifest to some extent even a legacy into that place. It's hard to believe if you talk about legacy in architecture in a young country as we are. Yeah? But if, if you take a look at um, the National Mall in Washington, D.C., all these buildings are monuments. Those are the legacy architectural disciplines and people give us. No? It's not that parking lot next door. It's the monument. Well, if you look back over the big pond, Pond Atlantic, that's the one, I think, yeah. Um, into Europe, you see time manifested in architecture. And this is what we're going to do for the next 20 minutes, something like this. We run a little bit of the time. So you can see those persistent structures reoccurring over time and how they changed, but still show the underlying uh, um, the patterns. You know, because uh, chapter 3 and 4 are about patterns and then systems of uh, flow. You know? So it builds into it. 
when we're going to run chapter three and uh, four with some slides and a talk, I yeah fairly quick, open-minded talk, lots of discussion because it's important that you understand where this is coming from, and um, then. We're taking a quick break so I can load the last few slides from uh, the assignment. If you have the assignment, I want the paper copies. Preferable also, if, if you don't have it, if I submit it completely with you right up on Blackboard time, but having it in the hand is easier. I, and I have a question. I submitted through Blackboard, right? But it shows my name, but you said Use your Blackboard has a uh, option to say create uh, without showing names. Okay. And what I usually do, I can show you the guys. Uh, I usually go in Blackboard, download all the attachments to assignments. Mm -hmm. They pop up in the zip file, and I extract it. And uh, the zip file has some cryptic names. So if you actually click on, let's say, a PDF file, I just look at it for that. Okay, uh, I was curious. There might, there might at some point, there might pop up an in initial or something like this, I don't care. Uh, so I make this as, as, not, as much as of not knowing as possible. Uh, if you write your name down as Mr. Smith instead of your N number, well, I know that this is Mr. Smith. Uh, uh, some of you put the N number on it, so, so it's fine. And for a few PowerPoint slides I actually put up, I actually make sure that usually that I don't show the N number. So if you want no real personal identification. But I ask actually people come up and say, hey, what would you like to comment on this? Different words. Huh? If you feel uncomfortable, well, <laughs> it's a learning process. I want to, if possible, everyone should come up here and talk about their ideas, why they did this reverse design. Because um, that helps us with that communication skill. Even if you think you didn't do a great job, there is no crappy job. There's only learning in that type of assignment. Huh? I think uh, and Andrea was, uh, uh, yeah, was he, he was yesterday in my office. Yeah. Uh, basically, the way I see that assignment is almost like a pass fail with like excellent job, good job, and miserable job. You get the feel. It's more an exercise to make you think outside of the box. But, question, who has talked to folks who did this class before? Did you watch the video about week number two from the summer class? Yes. You did watch the video from last summer? I watched the whole video. I, I, about I the fast forward during presentation times to see what presentations that are like. Ah, uh, okay, but you did, did you see the assignment presentation? Uh, because I looked at the, the few uh, uh, submissions earlier this morning, I'm like, do they actually know where this is? <laughs> like, very oh, interesting, very, very interesting recognition. So, next class, hello video, different city. <laughs> I actually I, I identified three cities to be feasible for doing this. So, but maybe different. All right, let's go. So, do you tell us before or after what city it is? Can you tell us before, now since we're submitted? Yeah, since everyone submitted, what is the city? Let's, let's wait. <laughs> is it Asia or is it Europe? All right, let's do this. <laughs> oh, we got the time. I kind of like not knowing because it keeps you creative. Well, let's, we are flexible in this class, you know, let's. But since let's everyone's done, we might as well know. I don't know if everyone's done. Everyone has submitted it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Um, Reverse design assignment, now we're traveling in time, two hours in, into the future. So, there's a book called City Maps, um, which is kind of funny because we just turned out last year that adult coloring is a theme now. <laughs> yeah? uh, you have these patterns, you have the animals, animals, and animals, and some planners came up with, or some planner came up with, let's do city maps. So, small book. Well, 30 or 40 um, pages with site plans basically from famous cities or cities of interest. So technically speaking, some jazz person found the building footprint and the parcel outlines 
and made an outline map. You could do that as a GIS design. Nothing fancy about it. The cool part is to make this a book and sell it on Amazon. Yeah? So what I did is, well, apparently the one you got, then I rasterized it, played with GIS a little bit, yeah? got to make sure that you can move this in. And in here is actually, well, this is actually in PowerPoint, remove the background. If you look at it carefully, it gives you a slightly greenish coloring. Yeah? So you can actually re uh, remove background, introduce transparency, so everything white here, white here, turns in transparent. So now, you can use Google Maps and find the real place, that wouldn't be. Where is that? Bangladesh. And then you overlay it. Yeah. This is not fa no fancy GIS, this is just that you can now see it in the ripples here from the bad scan earlier. Um, so this is the outline of your assignment on the real world um, picture. That picture is taken, that screenshot is taken in June. Uh, but you also can see, hey look, this is a parcel here somewhat, or a street, but it looks completely different in its whole. But also you will realize that some structures here have like a very kind of centered lay put on a or on a or um, put on an elevated position, even though it's not elevated position in elevation, but by its placement. The hierarchy of the centers are different. Yeah? So um, this is actually a Catholic school. <clears throat> oh, let's take a look at this. Take a look at it in the real world. And where are you? I don't want this. Okay. Because we are in the screen. This So you actually see where in the world you are. So we're flying from Florida over Africa to India. And bam, we're down in Bangladesh. Yeah. So if you can you can play around with this a little bit, can you see this? Yeah. Shape uh, pattern from uh, the assignment. Everyone sees that? So you can actually then rotate a little bit around, fly around a little bit. Uh, I think it was right click. Zoom in and you get a little bit the impression this is the little island, this is a water body as some of you identified. Yeah, there are bridges. I think that was the easy part. <laughs> <laughs> the water. That's actually funny because we, I, in the summer when I had this assi same assignment, I had students actually being a little bit confused about it because of the pattern. You know? Well, but you, you can see the two turn roads, around this, right? you can see, okay, fine, this is a, here, this larger field looks like a sports field. You, know? you can see here some arena style um, beaches or a building. You know? But this is some assumption we see from the top. So the, the nice part of Google is um, if you zoom closer, and did have this yesterday, I don't get it. You can pull in the street view. And this is why I like international examples because again, it depends on the context. So you can move through here. And just looking at this, 
So urban forestry apparently is not as adjusted as in our area. Yeah? If you look at the height of the, the tree, if you observe the buildings, what can you see? Overhead wiring, very intense overhead wiring. This seems like electric and or uh, cable. Massive gates. Yeah. The lower uh, balconies, you can see other examples of lower balconies are actually also gated. Yeah. So, a different flavor in terms of the design. So, if you just scroll through, you can see construction going on. Yeah. Let's go back. Highlights of this area as you get acquainted with where we are. So a very, a very interesting point was this building here. Yeah. So if you go here, this is the one-shaped building, the T-shaped building. So it's actually a girls' school. Yeah. And. Perception of barriers. If you look at the street plan and go a little bit further, I think this is it. You can see now how actually high how high those buildings are. Look at that cable summit here. Huh? Some areas of the US you have so look this could be Comcast cable in some rural country uh, uh, landscapes. Yeah? But the uh, I can do this with the first one. Um, what I wanted to show is the as uh, university, but here, here. and everything depends again. Uh, different perception. And we have the park. Um, so yeah, it was quite interesting to explore this area actually and figure out okay, if you exit the street view now, where are you at? And what is that? How does this area look like? You know? Small cut, um, interesting part as well. If we tilt this back, I actually have a building from an architect for the next two or three sessions, which is here. That's the Bangladesh, it's a 3D model. Of the Bangladesh uh, Assembly. Uh, this one here. And that um, is concrete. So uh, when we go into the discussion for site planning and materials and um, context, I'm actually presenting Louis Kahn. Uh, architect born in Estonia, grew up in the Philadelphia area, and um, fascinating what he's doing with form and light out of concrete. And there's a whole area in architectural design we call now poodleist, uh, like as poodle, because the concrete smacks in your face basically with that kind of dominant mega structure. Uh? And Louis Kahn took on a few different projects, uh, the University of Exeter Library as an, as an example. In Philadelphia, I a few. So we're going to jump all over. Okay, yeah, I have a uh, well known uh, brewer's building in uh, Boston City Hall. Yeah, Edgar Hoover Building, FBI main headquarters, DC. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, like, basically, the whole uh, town in Boston is do not like uh, the City uh, Hall building, but the architects and designers uh, raised like one of the best. Examples of uh, rules buildings of the time period. Oh. Mm -hmm. Who has submitted after 10 a.m. this morning? Um, let's look this after. Let's get, go through the lecture. I don't want to waste too much time on switching things around. Uh, let's go through the lecture and then um, we go into the students' uh, work. 
and he's back, so he actually learned something. All right, that's real estate development need to plan. Duh, yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? The bare minimum why you would need to plan is because you need to sell it to your financing team. Huh? Without the plan, you can't build. You can't make the, the larger decisions. So, this is the idea right, running through now plans and visions. As we know, visions is a very fundamental topic in my classes because if you don't have a vision, you can't create a plan. You need to know a little bit what you want. You know? And a basic simple question would be what's your, what kind of annual salary do you envision for yourself in the next five years? Now we had this discussion. You know? So what are the steps you need to do for that? Or do you say, ah, you know, a small, small little cabin somewhere on the Caribbean island is fine enough and I move tourists around? Is that a retirement plan or a business plan? No? Questions. This is my vision. No? My vision for this class is to open up your eyes and have fun with you guys in this class. No? That's more actually more goal than a vision. Vision is being a good educator. So visions manifest in different ways. And there is the vision of place, home sweet home. And one of the oldest cities, and then in architectural terms, manifested is Arbella in Jordan, uh, which actually has here a um, specific feature. What is a city? In a historical context, what are the main features for cities? History. Let's say 1000 after uh, AD, 1500 AD. What are the major, or even now, what are the major features of cities? More easy, don't think complicated. Transportation, fine. Buildings. Buildings, somewhat fine. More strategic, think about political science. Source of economic, uh, major source for leadership. Economic, aka trade, leadership, function of government. Yeah? There are trade junctions, marketplace, place of worship. If you look, you will see places. Yeah? You have the central marketplace or you have a central place of worship. You have the function of government. Yeah? City government, council, maybe a king. Yeah? Before. Uh, we all have seen movies about Scotland. You have cities and they are actually someone govern that region. You know? It's blue blooded or not, or point. In medieval times, the other features were place of court. You're not going to get justice on the countryside. You need to go to a place of court. And some cities have the right to coin, or mint coins. You know? Like what we have here as a Federal Reserve, cities had that right to do that. Like particular appointed by the king. And this is more medieval ages, Europe, France, Germany as, as the center of that kind of development. Yeah? But you also see that trade function in, the, con in um, the Roman Empire, how they conquered and expanded the empire, and the strategic points of where they actually built cities. Yeah? So we have certain functions in this case, we also look here at the function of fortification, the city law. It's called the city state. Yeah. Well, loosely, now this is incorporated. Nowadays, it's legally incorporated. And you also can see here that there's something going on as a central place. And even on the black and white picture, you can see major uh, infrastructure routes, potentially roads going. You also can see then outside there's something else going on, uh, low level buildings, there's some fortification, uh, apparently you differentiate between protected zones and non-protected zones. Yeah. And the classic example would be you have gate, you have walls or some other form of defense and you have the elite uh, quarters and you have functions of quarters around. Yeah. That sketch went famous again just a few years ago on the Daily Show with John Stewart. Hmm. 
because a community uh, group in northern Idaho wanted to build a, a new city with their own government, etc., called the Citadel. And they basically presented this, which is somewhere from Europe and Africa. Yeah? The other, so Mary City. So the other part, <laughs> and uh, Lynch talks about site design as an axis. If you look here, this is a city with a central place, the Pyramid of the Moon on the top, and the different other centers attached to it. Certainly we understand that this is a place of worship city, yeah? but the hierarchies and the alignment of the features we have seen multiple times in our, our time, or still, yeah? in new city or new town planning. I have one or two slides on that. And this is a classic design for a shopping mall. Huh? In a very abstract sense. Is that your magnets? Yeah. Like a Home Depot or uh, Chasey Penny? Mar uh, Marcy's? Macy's? Macy's? Yeah. And you have different shops in between, and then out there you have uh, the other one. Yeah. Gotta think outside of the box. I've seen this pattern. This is a pattern from an ancient town in Cincinnati. Uh, in, uh, in Mexico, bam, pattern recognition. Because then you start learning what kind of patterns can you adapt to your own work. Patterns recognition. <coughs> Speyer am Rhein, Germany. Close to Heidelberg, one hour south of Frankfurt, if you want to follow on Google. Yeah? It was noted just about 2000, no, around mm, 25 or 50 before uh, Christ, noted as a Roman fort. Plus minus Roman zero. Fort. Roman, Roman fort. fort. Roman fort. The legionnaires. Yeah, Caesar. Yeah. Um, this is one of the largest cathedrals built out of red sandstone in Europe. Yeah. I think number three or number four in the ranking after St. Peter in Rome. A main street that is dominant white. So the king or the people of uh, power could actually roll in and celebrate. Yeah. Uh, Champs Elysees, Paris, uh, big white, roll in for parade. This little shadow drop is a tower. That's the remainder of the original city wall. And if you look carefully, there's a ring going around the city wall. And then you can see infrastructure coming in. This is the, the railroad uh, and the rail station. Um, I know. Oops. Why is this? And here you can see the, the human scale. This is the view to the cathedral. Yeah? So this is normal people in the telephone booth, uh, somewhat international size, but you can see this overarching huge uh, building. 11.50 was the crown breaking on uh, that building. So the building is pretty much down old. Yeah? Burned down a few times. But you can see it's human scale. It's a pedestrian zone, delivery only in the morning. And if you do the user sign, that's actually an urban designer handshake. Yeah? If you look at this, seriously look at this. Look at that and say the width of the street versus the scale. That's like the 101 on does this make sense? Yeah? And width of the street, height of the buildings as part of the scale. So your finger, that L, gives us somewhat an idea if this is completely out of human scale or not. So next time you walk, let's say, downtown Miami, boop, huh? doesn't matter what kind of palm tree and blue sky you have. It's like, boop, New York, hello. Yeah? Or Washington, D.C., because it's relatively flat from its building height, because there's an ordinance, there's law not to build higher. You look at this and it's like, oh, the in New York, this is, feels warmer. Yeah? So, there's something about those places. All right. History. Mannheim, Germany, just across the river, closer to Frankfurt. Um, 
There was a time where we had to defend people, cannons, you know, 1606 is this, it's old. That shape here is the so-called, uh, some of the citadel actually a uh, built on the wall, wall system because you had brick wall and you put the cannon up. So if you have a wall like this, like in a, in a pirate ship, and shoot, if someone comes from this angle, you need to move the ship. You can't move walls. So what they did is they built the walls in angles. So in theory, if this is the angle, one wall versus one wall, let's take a look at a section like this. If you have this, you can shoot this way, you can shoot this way, and you have a problem when you're standing here. Huh? Nicely said. In modern art, military, so you say this is one potential kill zone. Yeah. So you can see as defense, this is actually the shading is a river, and the shading on top of the right is the other river. The, this whole fort is the city is built at the mouth at the uh, merge of the river. There are two two major marine transportation lines. It's another thing you have to remember: cities had certain powers. But cities got usually founded at infrastructure or resources. If you look at the colonization of um, uh, not just America, but in particular in uh, Africa, it was a seaport as a city, and then with the railroad and some major roads going into the hinterlands yeah? and colonizing there and getting resources up. Yeah? There is a pattern, and technology helps. Pattern here as well that about 100 years later, they figured out that we are all happy. The age of enlightenment came, Renaissance enlightenment, remember? Yeah. And um, they changed the physical composure of the city because they decided we don't need cannons to defend, we have our minds. And they put actually here a residence uh, um, castle. So not like fortified anymore, no, big windows, light, sun, you know, similar to what you have seen in France, like Versailles, which is one of the stereotypes of these kind of hotel, uh, castles. Uh, and you can also see there's a crit pattern emerging, you know, like we see in the, the chapter number three, crit pattern for circulation, yeah? this is fairly uh, recent. Yeah. They remodeled the whole castle area, they put actually a rail station here, and the whole city core changed again, and you can see over a few hundred years, this is roughly 400 years of time we have seen in five slides. This is the old river, this is the castle, this is the, the grid pattern, or as they call it, quadranten, quadrants, yeah? and the addressing for these are actually A1, A2, A3. Sim similar like you live on Chase Street in DC. Yeah? Uh, but you also can see the, old, the, the ring uh, street, you know, like the uh, green belt, and then you have the outlying uh, connections to uh, interstate, one way is this way, then you have a major connector to <coughs> interstate here, this down here. Uh, you can see now here this is harbor and port area, and the rail station here somewhat persists as well. Very compact, very dense uh, development. Yeah? All right, let's jump to a different place. To give you an idea where we have been, uh, this is Mannheim, this is Frankfurt. Frankfurt, <coughs> Mannheim, Speyer is about here, like really like the yellow line behind it. We're going to jump now to Italy. Houdini. Remember, defensive structures and how they exist still today. Marketplace, central spot, specific design. And you can see here, these are the leftovers of that defensive structure and set up of hundred years ago. Yeah? And they keep going with this. 
city of Turin. <coughs> Why is it so small? I don't know yet. Maybe. Yeah. Defensive structure here again for the elite, and then here the administrative areas and the park area now as more fun place to hang out and enjoy life. No, no, why it's so small. Google Earth. If you have a little bit of time, let's say over the week of Thanksgiving, take take a look. <laughs> take a look. All right, I give you 20 minutes of that class time <laughs> for the coolest cities you found on Google Maps or Google Earth. Cool. Yeah? And find the history behind it, like play with it. Because yeah? sometimes in the fast pace of real estate development, and sometimes put the project in place, finance project, get it done, sell out, don't care about what happens after that. If it's great, you made a name. If it's not so great, you don't care because you sold it out. Something like this, fun exercise like this, helps you to keep your feet on the ground as a part of you changing landscaping. You have with one townhouse remodeling, you have impact on the family who's buying it. If you put 150 units as apartments somewhere, or 400 units as apartments somewhere, you're changing neighborhoods. Yeah? So, depending on your geographic scale and the product you're developing, <coughs> you're making impact more than just tomorrow. Beyond that. You know? And sometimes, I think sometimes it's good enough to, or not good enough to be a master on your Excel spreadsheet. <coughs> you gotta have this gut feeling if this is right, if this makes sense by design and by product type. You know? So. So when you were talking about cool cities, I thought about Dubai and how they have all the little islands. They kind of done. Yeah, but they are artificial. Yeah. <laughs> they are artificial. Yeah, but so this is right now the organic home crew. Well, well, that's my, a nice contrast. My question was actually going to be, those would be all equity because Sharia law doesn't allow, or how how does that work? Because I know one of my clients was involved in the Bank of Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So how do they actually finance those transactions? I have no idea, to be honest. Okay. I have not looked into the finance aspects of those islands uh, where you say, hey, here's a million dollars in the suitcase, make, make that island. Well, I mean, you'll get your hands chopped off if you're collecting interest. That's why I was wondering. I don't know about that. I, don't, I have no idea about those um, procedures. <laughs> no? In terms of the architectural design, like the world or other than palm tree, uh, you can find um, really interesting. You know? And in the uh, Middle East, particularly in the uh, Emirates, uh, in that area, um, urban planning is a complete different animal. Like, we are playing with mice. The prince owns the infrastructure. They have, they have the elephant of <laughs> uh, basically, if I make this comparison. You know? I had a um, fellow student in my doctoral program who ran for Government of Qatar might mix up the country, but he was the, one of the chief developer uh, officers for the government side. Smaller projects are billion dollars. That's what he's dealing with, the smaller ones. <laughs> yeah? And there was a huge, for some reason, there was a huge clash between the uh, planning studio professor and him, based on their own personalities, let's say it like this, it's great. That's the reason why you guys are doing teamwork here, because every personal personality is clashing at some point. <coughs> uh, and they really had a, a moment where um, teaching experience was set in contrast in terms of billions of dollars project volume, and they had a major fallout. So keep it easy. I will not comment on different countries, ritual or legal systems. I have no idea about. The re one reason why I present Europe a lot is I have some feedback and know what's going on. Huh? All right, Turin, Italy. Remember Turin, Italy? A little bit in the north of Italy. Let's go back. This builds on the visual. Citadel, fortified area, regular park, uh, housing, park area, and here you can see some pattern as well, and there is the river. Yeah, let's look at this. 
things we know. The river. And then, what do you see? <coughs> look at patterns. <coughs> Seems pretty regular, huh? Yeah. Okay, look at where are irregular patterns. Near the fork, near the greener is <coughs> up top. All right, stop me through. On top. I don't where have the, a Where the big park is, where the green area up top, yeah. This area, all right. You start getting irregular. This looks like a uh, central uh, marketplace, yeah? Yeah. And uh, if you look at the axis, you have here an X uh, a corridor coming up. You have here a corridor coming up. You have here a somewhat a plaza, yeah? You have kind of a triangle coming down. And you have a huge amount of irregularities here. Uh, open spaces and changes. What I know about for some European cities, like London, for example, there is a law that no builds can be at, at a certain height or it may uh, break into the view of one of the churches. So maybe that's why you have these irregular no. lines. No? Not in this case, but yeah. In some churches, uh, as in the sea, is it likely, um Victim Memorial. That's this U shed you need to do. <coughs> this is the example. This irregular terrace here, open spaces, are actually the old defensible structure rebuilt. So if you go back, this is. The state is mine, Louis XIV, uh, Louis XIV, was also nicknamed as the Sun God. Yeah? Because he was thinking he's the center of the universe. Yes, please. So, since we saw the difference of 400 years, have you thought about kind of an overlay as to in another 400 years what the infrastructure was? Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Up in the head, man. That's what happens when you, when you Google Inception. Yeah, the movie that yeah. between, yeah. between, and between. Uh, absolutely brilliant with the architecture. That's actually the Lego version. You know? It's going to have the Lego man here when we do those blocks. But um, this comes now to the game of what has Hollywood shown us. Uh, did I ask what's your favorite movie? I did. Uh, so Blade Runner. Blade Runner shows you a certain future. Uh, movies like Outpost, Sean Connery has actually a military police guy on Mars. Total Recall on Mars. Fifth yeah. Element. Fifth Element. Mm -hmm. Brilliant for the architecture. <coughs> Apocalyptic in terms of traffic. Yes. Traffic patterns. Yeah. Minority Report. Yeah. Minority Report <laughs> was interesting with the cars that drive sideways and yeah. on the uh, ways. Um, I Robot is one of my favorite movies like in terms of what history shows, impact of humans, art artificial um, skeletons, yeah, and replacement. 
And um, he, the struggle that uh, Will Smith shows in adapting towards the future and the technology. Yeah? The latest struggle we had was exploding cell phones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the retro in, in iRobot with the Chucks converse, yeah, as a, like a collector's item, is kind of humorous. Um, comic industry is pretty interesting when you look at the future. <coughs> um, but I think Hollywood, you gotta kind of take a look at that and say what kind of themes you want to do. Like future with the dark side involved. Like uh, Sin City. Dark Sin City. Sin City or Dark City. Yeah. You know? The fact that we are getting control from outside. Um, that the idea is that if the city is somewhat a container for society, you know, almost like a snow globe, and you shake it up a little bit and you see how it changes, you are in the middle of what we have seen in the last hundred years, I say, for infrastructure or social programs, you know, housing programs, etc. Sometimes we are somewhere in a test globe, somewhere shaking up. Um, so movies sometimes give us that perspective as well. Where you can say, hey, how do you change this kind of view? You know? And um, the interesting thing is, are they going to paint it completely happy? Or are they going to paint it completely extreme dark and negative? You know? And there's currently, even for if it's in Wild West setup, the remake of the classic Westworld, which is interesting because it's playing with time and changing time. You know? So. Um, if you're interested in the social component of that stuff, well, there are dissertations and books written about it. <laughs> yeah? But the idea is, you can see in visual, the change is already, this is more of a fun adaptation of a movie. Yeah? Yeah. Um, can't remember where I got this, um, but you can see how the houses are built in actually underneath the infrastructure with the argument, hey, this is actually lost space or space opportunity. Yeah? Um, has to be something in maybe in Switzerland because that lady is Swiss, based on the type. Um, and this is again um, San Francisco Bay Area, but then basically some turmoil coming in. Um, it's also dated because you have somewhat here the infrastructure on top of the roofs, like satellite dishes. Yeah, uh, but those are the big ones. All right. So if you dream about a perfect city. I show you the manifest, what happened, someone built, you know? What's your vision? What is a vision in general? I kind of mentioned it earlier a little bit. What is a vision? How would you describe to your fellow student what is a vision? I was going to give you some. Well, we had, I have a dream as well. Yeah. You know? What else? I don't like the end. What our personal definition is, or yeah, how would you describe it? Your personal drive, maybe. All right, Google what else? to your goals. <laughs> goals. <laughs> to the road, like a, a roadmap to a destination. Of is the it a roadmap to the destination, or is it the formulating your destination? Three leaders here in the front. I haven't heard much from you guys. It's not more like it's not a destination, but more of a journey. Where it can take you. All right. Question: Is your vision a destination or the journey towards that destination? The journey. Mine. I, you gotta enjoy the journey. So you can't just. To me, it's the journey, because life in general, we all have a goal, but we have to enjoy what we're doing on our way to the goal. We learn on our way to the goal, so it's a part of the goal. So, so it's like yin and it's, really the, it's really the journey, because if we go from here to being, for example, big time developers, and we don't enjoy what we're doing along the way and learn things along the way, then <coughs> it's really a loss. It's but if your goal same. or vision in this case that you want to be successful in the... In 
you want to be successful and have fun with the things you do. That is your vision that defines your destination. I want to be the best developer in Southern, Southern Florida. I didn't say the richest, I said the best. Yeah? And then you have these steps, your path to get there, your journey. Yeah? But, is that your vision? And then that crystallizes into goals? And then you operationalize or plot your path, your journey? The vision gives you that, that end, hopefully that end result, so that you can plot out your... Yeah, you gotta have the vision, there. and then you realize what kind of steps you need to do. Yeah. Martin Luther King, I have a dream. And then he gives examples through his life and through his speech what steps needs to be undertaken. Ronald Reagan, the city, the city on the top of the mountain, and a great city. Gotta build this up. Huh? Your vision to be the best developer here in the, in, in the state, one step is partaking in this program. Huh? I'm slightly irritated. <laughs> I don't Is know that if you're going to be or what. Was that the first time that I did it? Or, or oh, no? Oh, yeah, I was being so nice. Oh, okay. All right. Be nice, guys. All right. Pop my gun. So if you look up the dictionary, a vision is actually something seen in a dream, trance, or ecstasy. Trance and ecstasy as in the mental state rather than the drugs. Oh, because everyone was like, you're doing uh, <laughs> No. Yeah? Certainly questions that vision as a great idea of new innovations, launching pads of development, or even of imperative of cultural change. I have a dream. Certainly the step of cultural change. Did we talk about anomalies yet? We can do this. So, what is the vision then in the real estate development context? Design. Hmm? Design. Somewhat design, yeah. Exactly. And one thing you guys need to do in this session and definitely in the next session, next session is uh, done by Dr. Foggy. He's basically giving himself as a guest speaker and then you have enough time to dig into urban plan to really break into the, the secret behind the, uh, the game setup. Um, each team will be only successful if you have a vision that defines your goals and your values. Remember, spaces and places. Places are spaces with felt value, identity, and culture. Home sweet home, felt value. No? That creates a place. If you, you need to have a vision to create places out of vacant space. No? If you walk into the lobby and I ask you, hey, what do you see over there? And you're like, hey, what? But if I say, what do you see in this lobby if you were to develop it? And you start spitting your ideas. Because your personal preferences define somewhat the vision and therefore you come up with that cutting edge or with the failure or something in between, a big in between on how would you redevelop that lobby outside? Yeah? Or the whole building? What really is interesting then to see is where social goals and sustainability come into play. Yeah? All right. Another vision we had, this is running through the, the highlights of planning theory. This planning is planning a city due to issues or with vision. 
the city walls we have seen have been resulted or have been our results because of conflict, war. Yeah? Fortify your city so you protect your residents. Yeah? That fell apart. This is an example of the three magnets, the town, the country, the country and the town country, of an accountant around 1902, uh, thinking that the great city, this is a buzzword, the great city, great city of London needed to be rebuilt because of all the filth and social injustice in that place. Slum lords, health issues, etc. There's a story that there's this huge uh, ferry accident on the River Thames, not at that time, but sometime. The Thames was so contaminated with sewer and all that stuff, bad stuff from the industries and human waste, that more people basically died after the ferry uh, accident than actually during the accident through trauma because they had all the health issues after that. Yes, that she lived over there. When I was over there, I was told, and I don't know if it's an urban myth or not, that it's the only place that's acceptable for the man to walk on the inside of the sidewalk with the woman towards the street because the smells were so bad. In London? That, yeah, that people would pass out, and it was supposed to be the man created the barrier um, to the woman, so it's actually culturally polite. So you, you started out the other way around. Right, right, so the man walks closer to the water. Closer to the street. No, to, to the river. Yeah, that's actually a common thing you should do. I thought you're supposed to keep the woman on away from the road. You're supposed to keep her away yeah, from the road. No, no, okay, it's, it's, it's to go for etiquette. The old, old traditional style of etiquette is, let's say, if this is a curb, this is the building, you know, here's the road. Dirt water, you basically would say the guy stands here yep. and the lady. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> She's <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, long hair. <laughs> would walk there as part of the protective thing. And the story behind that is also the, the gentleman thing that you would, in movies you can see this still, but apparently it was for some reason. The guy would actually walk first to make sure that there's no pothole or something on dirt. And, and the idea is, if something was, comes splitter-wise, this is like anecdotal history, you know? rain, you know, like a car nowadays, a car would drive by, this would be the protector. You know? So, oh, there are other ways to see, to see this. But um, I don't know if that story is based on dirty waters or the smell, but there is somewhat that kind of historical delivery of strong male protecting even in the street scene the, the weaker woman. Um, in the year of 2016, do not quote me on this, this is not my personal belief. Yeah? Well you remember our Bronx tale with opening the door and we have the button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's focus on let's focus on real issues here. Uh, because we gotta we gotta push the time today. So this is famous. This is Chester Black and White, the next one comes in, in color. Ebenezer Howard, the so-called Garden City. It's the concept of an accountant running basically a performer spreadsheet on how a city should be built and managed by its people. Property is owned by a corporation of that is the city. Everyone buys in into the corporation for I think 90 years. So it's nine, oh, oh, full generation, 99 years at least. City of Singapore is doing that too. Generational leases. Yeah. And then there's a split as in a Central Park area or the Crystal uh, Palace, yeah, community center. You have the Crane Avenue and you have sectors coming out of here with distinct land uses. Distinct means you're not living in the upper quarters when you're producing knives and forks and other handcraft in the first floor. No. You go to a manufacturing hall and produce a product there and you live here and in between you shop and you have fun. Re recreate. Yeah? The Garden City as in agricultural areas, Grand Avenue and here the Central Park. Park functions. Recreation, relaxation with work and residence, but separated by land uses. Published in 1902. 
The separation of land uses in the legal terms of the United States are defined by the Supreme Court case City of Euclid versus Amarioti, 1926. This is a manifest written 25 something years earlier than that, explaining why this would be great to do. And in 1926, we have the Supreme Court ruling that we are having now parcel-based distinct land uses or parcel. Yeah? In 1912, 1916, New York City zoning ordinance is defining the size of a parcel. This guy here is defining the size of a parcel. Beyond that is also defining the size of the city. 25,000 people or 32,000 people and 58 in that setup here are a city. Hierarchy system, if you look at patterns, central city, satellite city, 58,000, 32,000 people, connected with high roads and railways in 1902. He wrote it in 1898 and then it got republished in 02. Yeah? So pretty visionary as in, I want to have everyone have the same type of housing, fair housing, Everyone should have income, everyone should have recreation. In Great Britain, as part of the idea of demolish the great city of London and rebuild it with a more sustainable product. No? That idea was actually built. It's now they swallowed in uh, Melbourne and Letchworth are two cities who have been built. Yeah? This is Greater New York, uh, Greater London. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see basically it's now a suburb, somewhat. Uh, we have seen cities like this in the US as well. Uh, this is Redburn, New Jersey. Going down to the site plan detail of this is the highway walk. Uh, this is a cul de sac. Chapter 3 is particular about that circulation and connecting patterns. Yeah? But here, we have an alley going in that co connects to the park. So all these properties here are actually back into the park, backing into the park. Interesting concept. You know? uh, it's not the youngest one, but you also can see in terms of grid development, there's this loose grid uh, as explained in the uh, book with this little tiny pictograph on the side. But you can see still here, some of the square loosely attached to maintain the harmony between topography and the physical space uh, or planned areas of, of open spaces, like all these pocket parks that come in. No? Don't have actually any color. Right. Um, and the idea again, so Columbia, Maryland is a planned city following the uh, Garden City Complex. What else do we know about planned cities? What are the planned cities we know? Movies. Or oh, this is a city with the, a planned city that was basically staged for a movie. It starts with Series 4 falling down on the street. With, with, with what going on? Series 4, the spotlight for Series 4. Uh, the Truman, Truman Show. The Truman Show was placed in which town? Oh, yeah, it's a Florida town. The, the New Urbanist, right? Mm -hmm. The new, new Haven? Is it New Haven? Yeah. But it was planned from scratch with connecting features, with backyard, with that white picket fence in front of the house specific size of the townhomes, the orientation of the townhomes, that whole idea of the town square. So next time you do Netflix and chill, you're looking actually at regional <laughs> planning movies. <laughs> well, yeah? that's a real neighborhood though? Yeah, that's real that's real. That's real. It does exist. The next example, celebration. <laughs> celebration is a Walt Disney town up north completely planned and developed by the Walt Disney Corporation. Basically, four footprints, if I remember right, four building footprints, you can re rotate them and have a mirrored location, and you basically select four or five siding types, but that's it. 
catalog shopping like IKEA for your home. In a completely planned and structured, new urbanist influenced uh, development, if you compare all of them. Huh? But the idea again is the vision is to sell, or the sales pitch is to demonstrate the vision of better living as a manifesto in the border and put that pitch on how great your community is. Not just the product, but it's, oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Some people who can say gated communities are selling the vision of safe, being safe. That's not necessarily held up completely. You still have certain type of crimes there, but you gate up or you shut out some of the crimes you would consider. Yeah. So if you look here in the region, if you drive just University Road, uh, University Drive up in a big circle from sunrise and coming down, and look at the entrance design of some of those larger neighborhoods, or subdivisions. Some are like lovely, huge walls. That's this one that's called the Hawk, Hawk Standing or yes. something. Okay. Huge walls, huge palm trees, beautiful light uh, design in the night. But it has this one huge main gate area. You walk, run in, have a small plaza, palm trees, and then a uh, Hawk, yeah, Hawk Standing. Huh? Uh, I pass it. I've never been inside. I would actually would like to see it inside. Really nice inside. It's it's nice. Nice. Huh? Nice. But you pay the premium for that nice yeah. and that gated community. I, I perceive it as gated community. The way the landscape is done around this. Yeah. So uh, maybe we need to make a field trip sometime. No, it's so hard to get inside there. It's like I'll get you. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Well, it doesn't have to be this semester, but in the long run, maybe we can. To local examples that really resonate well with this is great, this is not so great. All right, uh, old school example here again: the conception of the neighborhood structure. Yeah, Clarence Perry. Um, basically, again here, central place, places of worship, more medieval setup of pet, uh, road patterns, and again a segment. If you look here, this look, looks like a, a wedge. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a specific angle here as a cope. But the future of the city, we're hitting a break soon, guys. The future of the city is interesting. What I find interesting, this is a drawing from a journal article of 1974. You can see that on the Comedy Central reruns of Futurama all the time. It does look like Futurama. Oh, the Jetsons wasn't good. Yeah, the Jetsons was good. Jetsons was good. Yeah. When they had the, uh, Le was it Leroy? Leroy the dog, yeah. and they had, they had the little flying car. There was another one recent, uh, um, not the, is it the Untouchables? No, um, comic animated, um, time travel. Futurama. Time with time travel, here's a crazy time travel. Uh, it's more about family values. It's funny because they have this T Rex with small oh, eyes. Yeah, the yeah. hmm? yeah, uh, blonde kid, right? Yeah, who turns into future blah, blah. All right, we we kind of have a discussion sometimes after class. <laughs> all right, all right. Plant cities, create visions. This almost looks like your homework assignment. This is a plan done by the French Swiss architect Le Corbusier. Oh, Le Corbusier. A name to remember. Because he did some awesome, awesome stuff in trying to demolish the world. Yeah. This is the city of Chandigarh, which is actually an administrative city um, built between the Punjab uh, region and I need to look that up. But it's actually physically built, completely master plan designed from scratch. This is one part of the corner you can see here in the master plan. Yeah. Um, because in the 50s and 60s, planning became a different role, or had, had got a different role in how to do the world, um, recreate the world in a better way. Planning in the US, in the 60s, what was the major impact on uh, planning in the US? Mass plan community. Mass of land communities and what else? Oh, the bunker. No, that was before. Eisenhower. Oh, the master plan or not? Uh, interstate system. Interstate system. Yeah. Uh, Enabling you 
uh, in a fast way to commute out of the inner city into the suburb. Yeah. What do they call it? Then they had the GI Bill that helped uh, returning soldiers to actually buy homes or create homes. Yeah. So you had a boom in the housing market with the individual transportation uh, increase as well. So you can say whatever happened, the interstate system is the first step of suburbia, of growing suburbia. Yeah? All right, different examples here. Uh, contrast on rebuilding cities. This one is in Chicago. No, Manhattan. They look somewhere like Manhattan. And then the idea of rebuilding cities. This is the uh, contemporary city by they could perceive how to rebuild Paris. So this guy came up, inspired by the, the skyscrapers of Manhattan. Uh, and then basically said, let's create skyscrapers in the down, middle in the heart of actually uh, Paris, yeah? and create this idea of the contemporary city. Uh, I say the middle of Paris. This is the, uh, the island of uh, the Sand Island, where a uh, tower is here. Like, this is a block model like you built with the Lego blocks. This is a block model of eradicating the whole city. Where's the, uh, the museum of fine art? After the Louvre, yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I've been in Paris once in my life. I'm oh, yeah, yeah. So I would have to advocate that. But somewhat it was built. <clears throat> Those are the banlieues. Those are what we could, would consider in uh, the projects. Nowadays, yeah. in terms of deterioration of material, you can see they have seen better days in terms of coloring and paint. Um, so the French architects actually designed these in the suburbs to deal with density. And chapter three and four are talking about density as well. And density is not always great. Because the more density you create, you also create pressure. Huh? Physical pressure or social pressure? Yeah, both. And we don't know sometimes how to deal with both. This is an interesting picture. I'm not sure if it actually is built, the 13th neighborhood. Uh, this is the um, a picture where a Algerian immigrant kid was hiding from the police in an electric substation, got electrocuted, and burned up. And that was the initial trigger for the 2004-2005 riots in France, where the whole country of France turned into a state of emergency. We had friends who somewhat compared that to the Rodney King riots in 1992-91 in LA, across the state of France, uh, to the country of France. Uh, because that pressure, that social pressure, the immigration policies, and the integration policies have not been resolved in a way you think we can resolve this. And we see these pressures coming up again and again in all the facets of society, in every country. Architecture and you as real estate developers have a fingertip, not a hand, but a fingertip in this. If you propose to build this, you need to be aware of the social implications, or you don't. I hope after this class, you think at least once about it before you build it. Yes, please. I mean, it's it just like shows, uh, like the, oh, of course you have the implications, but also how this is more or less like a, a humanistic experiment of what can, what works and what doesn't work. I mean, we should. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I think, uh, if you look at the history of, I uh, just touched iceberg tips here. If you look at the history of development uh, on the planning side and then into the social conflict of it, it's huge. Again, there are people writing dissertations about that. But my, my take here for this class is, before we go in depth details and numbers, is the idea of pattern recognition. What was working well? What can you recognize again? And um, where do you think you add your own personal flavor to it? No? We have seen this before. Access development, places of worship, Mexican city. No? 
in 2003, your Julis was in a town, uh, Putrajaya, in Malaysia, about an hour southeast of Kuala Lumpur. That is the new administrative town of the country of Malaysia, at least in 2003 when we visited. Well, that was the plan. Yeah. Access development. Used to be a plantation, completely bulldozed down, terraformed, like in science fiction. <laughs> Topography put in place, more distinct. That lake is artificial. Huh? At least that's what we have been told. And you also can see here, there's a mosque, central place, then you have the president's residence, top of the hill. And it's shortly see like office buildings down here to the next precinct. Or if you look at the human scale, That's the mosque, yeah. cathedrals, places of worship, traditionally, ah, peasants learn, someone is doing it. Yeah. <laughs> cathedrals typically overscaled, hyperhuman scale somewhat, yeah, because wow. Yeah. So no doubt about this, this is a normal human body here, cars, so bang. You can see this mosque from pretty much everywhere when you approach the city, as you, Daniel, as you said. Yeah? So the mosque is here, wherever you basically are, in those outer circles, you see this as a center. Um, backdrop here is the president's palace, or prime minister, president, prime, prime minister, prime minister's palace, um, and this guy at the shorts. Yeah? Um, and this is basically what we did as a study team trip for 13 days. Yes. Side question. As I mentioned, before with the mosques and churches about how their houses are designed around mosques and churches because they're also like uh, also more early communication uh, yeah. ways of communicating with them. Uh, but do we design in today's world, do we design churches as part of the central place of a, uh, of a community? No. To an extent? No. Stop playing with your phone, no one. Seriously. To an extent, yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but with the, uh, well, with that uh, potential, uh, what, do you, what do you call that, like in, in Turkey, where it was almost like an uh, authority of the government, you had all the mosques, yeah, you basically had the loudspeakers to, to warn all the people of uh, uprising with the military. I can't relate to that right now. You mean the, the, the typical that the the, the, the uh, tower uh, broadcasting the imams prayer speeches yeah. was used then for political propaganda? Yeah, well, yeah, it was used for political propaganda to uh, warn the residents that the military yeah. was uh, overthrowing the government. But it's, that's just the use of technology that was in place, I would think, not without making statements in political world. Yeah. What he meant is. So in a mosque, usually you have a, a tower where the imam is actually giving the morning prayers and the morning prayers. Uh, and usually the way it's that you sing the prayer and your community can listen to it. In a type of technology, you run this through a speaker system. Yeah? And in the recent uh, military uh, troubles and coup attempt in Turkey, that he mentioned is that that kind of technique was used to broadcast messaging to the community without making any statements yeah. about the value of the messages. Yeah. And again here, standing here, looking to the back, standing here, looking down. This is kind of this still under construction, that kind of shall so we say really wide street. This is like yeah. University Drive on one side. Both lanes University Drive. Like absolutely out of scale, mind blowing. You know? They did another town just for high tech. High tech development, that's a cluster. You know? Let's skip this. We all know this one. Central Park, New York. Parks have designs, you know? landscape designs. Then, in contrast of um, 
development. This is typically a long wall, so a typical London suburb, red brick, 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 brick stone homes. Yeah? Uh, typical worker developments where you moved from the apartment buildings now in in the early times, actually, corporation owned homes. <coughs> yeah. City of Nuremberg, company called Siemens. They have a whole suburb called Siemens Town yeah, because they build stuff like this. Yeah. Versus uh, Suntech City in Malaysia. Can you see the pattern? The Kuala Lumpur towers are somewhere here in the, uh, in the dust. This is about uh, 40, no, 80. Kilometers out. Completing private town was a, co a, a copper mine. And this is taken from the, pic the picture is taken from the top of the hotel because the copper mine now is actually a lagoon uh, hotel, casino, uh, conference center. Completely privately owned with a college attached. Uh, I hope this gave you some very interesting historical driven ideas where vision can lead people. Let's take a break. Let me load the pictures, the final pictures for the uh, student submission. Everyone can come up and give an interpretation and a story justification what they have envisioned with their design. That's the reason why you had to write a vision statement. Some of the submissions earlier this morning did not have a vision statement. So to be fair, we didn't talk in depth about vision in the last session. Please submit that vision statement by the end of sun, uh, Sunday evening. Graphics now, if you have written, not written, I would like to hear a piece of your story. Why have you designed that plan like this? I added, um, because why for it, I uploaded and then I tried to replace, and then I tried to replace, so there's probably... Yeah, I got an email last night about it was single submission, single file, one submission, and I changed it, so you just add so, to it now. So the, I was going to say, I sent you one right before I came, which actually has the north, west, east, south, because in the dirt, right. in the justification, I break it down. With All right, fine. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure that I have some tech upload issues on Blackboard in this class, and you guys have a chance. Okay, submit this without penalty to get the justification. Okay.
about this other thing? Who submitted this morning? Did you submit to her? No. No. Ah! Okay, now I know why I'm calling no this. Okay, fine. Just get it out. Okay. Get it to me. Okay. Yeah. Ask this ball. we had earlier as a central spot. Yeah. Yeah? This is aiming for this location here, for this park. Yeah? What else? So basically after you after you cross the river there's like a less less density of the population. Alright. It's, it's it looks like the same kind of in the Toledo. And uh, downtown it's like 
is basically I don't know, well, office buildings, historic buildings, retail buildings. There's like less uh, residential buildings, in like oh where, yeah. where you can see. And so you basically took experience from somewhere else, visiting visiting Toledo, pretty much, project, yeah. projected yeah, it yeah. on there. Want to say something about the black and the green? Green is open space park? Green, yeah, green is open space, like the black thing is like parking space. Oh, space. Right. Um, That's good. Yeah, so around around the downtown you can see like more residential buildings. Like so the interesting thing people, is... People who live in good. the city. The interesting thing, is, and he put work in it, you can really see this guy was really working on this. Um, the interesting thing is the orientation. Orientation was kept like as submitted from the original PDF. Well, the interesting thing, the next one is the next one was a student of mine probably in GS class. Put a north arrow on the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But this thing is 90 degrees off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't no shame, you did not know. <laughs> yeah? It's okay, I mean, north is up. And I uh, built actually a legend on the side. Yeah? With the color codes. <laughs> like it. I have no idea who is that, but whoever did that work, speak up. Explain what's the concept. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. do you. Thank 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 you. So you get you get scores for keeping it. <laughs> um, the colors look all like the screen. The one that looks pink is actually red. But anyway, um, I kind of like wanted my focal point to be that green area at north south. Uh -huh. Technically, I guess whatever. Um, and I wanted to create like my vision was to create like this commercial and retail corridor, kind of like a cool hit midtown type of feel or something. Um, and like where young professionals could like, because the blue around the green park or whatever is like the business district, if you will. And then there's a bunch of retail commercial and then the purple is the high density residential, so like the tall buildings. So this year? Yeah, like all yeah. around over there or whatever. Um, and I did like, I didn't put a lot of parking there. I put enough parking so that, you know, What's the difference between the, the first one and this one? This one is more commercialized, more commercial, sort of like downtown. More, more commercial land users, yeah, focus on the center. What else? Scale of planning. What is different in the scale of planning? He went detail rich on each building, and she is doing like a master plan. She is like, okay, this whole area could look like this. And the follow-up would be then, let's play with those buildings. No? Not saying both, or great, both, I don't know if it, in this case is effort done, thought put in, no? No feral. <laughs> um, skill bias missing, but that's just being picky now. You thought know? about it. <laughs> you thought about it. But, um, that's a good start in terms of a master plan. Sometimes you look at this and say, okay, what are the linkages we're going to build? What are kind of chapter three? What are the main functions in our plan we need to uh, satisfy? And then how, we re how do we rearrange them and arrange them? Now, here, rearranging is only possible because you reassign the land uses. All right, and I think you wrote something about that too. I saw a bunch of, part of the download documents I like the legend. Um, who's this? This is something. Uh, that shouldn't be yet. It's you. Uh, it, it is, but that's not the right uh, document. It's a draft. That's so not. It's, it's not finished. No. I don't know why it's like that. I guess this is how mine is. 